it's me Sarah again with our latest review on fangirl reviews so let's get down into it so today we are going to review a TV series that was released on Netflix called Wednesday and I know what you guys thinking it's well how I just wow I can't believe how wonderful this version of you know of the Anne's family I have seen and I trust me I've seen a lot of different versions of Wednesday trust me from from years ago from back when Lisa played Wednesday years ago and to the cartoons that came out just before this TV series began obviously so before we get into the TV series and all its wonderful things about it I'll just like to dive into uh, the previous past Wednesdays that we all come to love and know. So the first one is was done by a young little girl who was about six or seven years of age that started back in way back when where it was done by Lisa and she was a very cute little girl about that from when I from what I remember of her and I it was a good and interesting approach when she was just adorable and stuff like that and later on as the series grew and developed you start seeing that she goes from being a cute little six-year-old and she starts her character starts changing as we go along like Chris, like Christina Ricky she took it to a new, whole new direction where her character and her brother Pugsley they had this sort of um, sibling rivalry going on between them that was pretty good when I think about it. I, I loved how they uh, changed slightly for they go from um, from those young kids who were a bit of, tr bit of um, like trickery and stuff like that and turn into kids that were siblings who like to fight against one another which is common in families when even me and my sister we didn't get along all the time but we kind of tried to um, live on the same level at one point so Anyway, as after the Christina Ricci's appearance as Wednesday in the both movies, we then move on to the new Adams Family. That was a TV series that was also released in the '90s. There, we see Wednesday becoming more a bit of a dominant in the in her relationship with her brother, and comes off more darker and insaner when I think about it. And in that one, she becomes more the torturer and her brother is more the submissive type person who gave into her torturous, just evil intentions. <laughs> it's kind of funny when I think about it. And then we go, this, that particular part continues in the musical um, um, The Anne's Family that came out not too long ago where she continues to torture her brother but at the same time starts to develop these new um, gets drawn into normal things in you know that she's not normally used to when she's around her family she becomes a, she can't figure out where, where she belongs whether she still she's still kind of working at her identity that's what I'm saying so as she goes along so Later on, we get the new cartoon series that came, I mean, cartoon movies that came out not too long ago, where she continues to explore her character and trying to figure out where does she belong and and whether or not she starts rebelling in one in in one of the movies where she wants to explore, you know, more more of the um, her surroundings as she goes along. Now we get to the final of the, well the, not the final, I mean considering we may get more of Adam's family adaptions as we go along. I should mention, oh yeah, I should mention this one here guys. There was an um, independent um, fan web series that came out called, where the um, actress who was playing Wednesday was called M Melissa Hunter and she did an adult Wednesday Adams TV web series that was released on YouTube of course um, thanks to um, sadly enough they, the people from the Adams family told you know licensing guys told her to cease it because if of copyright reasons but unfortunately it's still out on YouTube at the, as we very as we speak and it still gains an online audience out there 
Now I'm getting to the final of the Wednesdays I'm thinking of, which is Jenna Ortega, who is of course, um, I think her version is the best and I've seen her in several other movies and TV, movies mostly, appearances, where she appears in, the first one time I've seen her was in The Babysitter, Killer Queen, and there's an X movie, and the Scream franchise movies that just, that have, um, uh, just started to come on, come out, which is even more exciting. and. I'm really enjoying how many the roles she's doing at the moment, and I also heard about how she's going to appear in the next. Um, t um, he's going to be appearing in the sequel, um, Beetlejuice Two movie. So I'm really excited about that very much, and I ca I can't tell you guys how much I'm looking forward to that. Now let's get into the Wednesday TV series. Now the Wednesday TV series is directed. Some some of the episodes are directed by the famous, well-known Tim Burton. And I know what you guys are thinking, oh great, I love his work. I've seen it, almost all his stuff. I've seen Bat the Batman movies, I've seen Night the Night Before, Before Christmas movie, and oh, there was just, just too many movies to count, and, and I really, oh yeah, and the, Beel the first Beetlejuice movie, oh, it's to die for. There's no word for it. To do, it. All the his work is to die for, and you can always feel the feeling behind his Tim Burton vision. That's all I can say about this, his um, vision. And I'm glad that that Danny Elfman also comes on board this um, the TV series. He has done lots of of Tim Burton's um, music for his movies, and and I think. He captured something that was incredible. Both Tim Burton and him did an awesome job doing this series together as per usual. As in, so you guys know, in the past, Tim Burton was approached years ago to do the original Chris, I mean, Christina Ricci's um, Adam's Family, you know, movie. And, but unfortunately, he turned it down. So he was offered the um, to do Wednesday years later, and he jumped at it, obviously. So... I think he did an amazing job doing this series. So I'll start diving into the story itself. I'm sorry, I'm dive, as I'm, I'm kind of really excited about this series. I've just been working forward to reviewing this one for quite a while. So let's get into it, shall we, shall we guys? So the story begins where Wednesday is at um, Nancy Reagan's high school and she finds out her brother was being teased by the swim team. So she takes revenge on the swim team by dumping some piranhas into the pool. This scene makes me think of uh, Piranhas 3D that I just previously reviewed on Boys and Girls Film Review and I thought it was kind of funny this scene where all these piranhas start swimming and then they start gobbling up the poor swim team boys. <laughs> it was hilarious. Now we dive into where Wednesday is expelled and now she has to go to Nevermore Academy, a school fun for weird kids who are outcasts and stuff like that. Sounds right up Wednesday Street when I think about this sort of thing. So Wednesday is less than thrilled about this because she thinks this is just another ploy, a ploy for her parents to mold her in their image, according to her obviously. So Wednesday is less than thrilled about this plan of, of what her parents are doing. So she wants to run away, like she, of course um, as she as she's about to run away, she actually encounters a monster in the woods, and she realizes that that Nevermore has secrets, and I think that this intrigues her. She's also a promising young writer who has wrote a few novel, you know, her own sort of novels, and of course, she also has to go to a therapist because of her issues, of course, and she, and all that stuff. So she's has. Bit of, she has a lot of cat. While she continues to act all dark and mysterious throughout the series, she continues to grow and develop. She also has a roommate called Eden. I mean, Eden, who is um, a werewolf, 
but not quite a werewolf just yet. She's still a werewolf who hasn't gone and embraced her fangs, if that's the word I can think of. So she's having difficulties um, adjusting to being a werewolf because because she cannot. Um, she's not how she's not doing the what the, what normal werewolves do, and her parents think this is not good for her. We also meet um, Bianca, the the queen bee of the school, who is um, practically used to date Xavier, a local tragic artist in the school, who is also attracted to Wednesday. Not only um, Xavier, but another boy, a townie or a normal, a normie, that's what they call non-magical related kids in the community of Jericho. There's a town in Jericho that's so full of just normal people, regular people in this series. So I'm kind of glad that in this Tim Burton's movie, TV series, he's embracing both putting two different types of communities in this series. In the past in his movies and TV shows, he's always made sure to include both white and, and dark, you know, in in his in his movies and TV series. Because that's the Tim Burton feeling to it. Because it kind of brings two sets of different types of stereotypes into into one bowl, obviously. And have to learn to either collaborate together or work or not work together. Anyway, so the series goes on about Wednesday coping in this town of Jericho and moving at this school. So she starts investigating the disappearances and deaths of some of the locals, some of the normals who have been being killed and some parts of their bodies being missing. So she goes on as a bit of an investigation of hers. So she starts a current investigation. All the time the sheriff is hiding something that we don't know about. Oh, I should mention both a lot of people are hiding something in this move in the series. Like Bianca is hiding the fact that she has siren um, her being submitted into this academy because she wants to escape her past from her mother. And the headmistress has her own secrets, like she wants to cover up um, I should mention in the first episode, one of the kids gets killed by the monster that's haunting um, Jericho and stuff like that. So she's covered it up and all the time Wednesday is trying to find out the truth. And of course she does find out the truth and and we do discover who the, people, the culprits are at the end of um, the, the um, series and we find out who is the, who is the ones responsible. I won't go, I mean, when I, when I see the monster in this series, I could sense Tim Burton's, you know, special influence all over this sort of scene when we see the monster. I think of, whenever I look at this monster, I think of, of Beetlejuice, um, the snake creature that Beetlejuice transforms in. That's the feeling I get from these, these illustrations. And according to what I found out is that this is based off Tim Burton's sketches he made himself. So it's kind of great that he has this creative influence over this sort of thing. Anyway, soon enough, by the end of the story, we do find out that it's actually Wednesday's current boyfriend, who's a normie, who turns out he's in the, he's a, a hide, a creepy monster that can transform into a, to this monster. And of course it's controlled by um, a woman called Thornhill, but as it turns out, she's not. That's an alias. As it turns out, her family had this is a, a was a big. They're a bunch of bigots who want to kill and destroy Nevermore and Morgan Academy. So she made her business to try to kill the um, try to resurrect one of her ancient ancestors in order to destroy the Nevermore Academy. And she resurrects it using Wednesday's blood and some of the organs of from the the victims and brings back her great 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 grandfather or whatever. And he goes on a rampage. Luckily enough, Wednesday, thanks to her 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 own ancestor, was able to um, survive and fight them him off. And we then get later on the as the girls Go, as the kids are heading off on vacation, not out of choice because 
Um, now the headmistress is dead, so that means the school is not permanently closed, just temporary closed until they get someone to replace her, obviously. And of course, um, as the kids head off on vacation, Wednesday gets um, phoned by a new threat. Like she gets a new stalker who will probably change the next, will give, take her to the next level. I hope so in season two. There has been talk about a season two. I'm hoping it will come out soon and we will have more and more Tim Burton's director leadership in the series. He made four, he kind of directed all four episodes in this series and the rest were either taken over by some other directors but still shuffled the similar Tim Burton feel to all of them obviously. So I'm glad that they did that. Anyway, so the that's season one in Wednesday Adams, and I got to admit, every time I think watch this series, I get I get shivers watching the series in a good way because I love Wednesday the TV series very much, and I like how much her characters developed over the years, and I also have been think ah before the series came out, guys, I've been thinking long and hard about this, but. For years before Tim Burton came up with the idea of making a TV series, is I kept thinking, gee, why doesn't Tim Burton make his own Adam's family? Hmm. It's been on my mind for quite a while, and I thought this is definitely some project that he's definitely made to make. So anyway, I'm kind of glad he has gone ahead and actually went ahead and did this. So in the end, I'm quite happy that the series turned out exactly what the audience has been wanting and from what I understand, I, what I've read, is that it has developed an, a big audience and it's quite a, made a very big difference and I'm kind of happy about that. I'm a bit, I was a bit worried at first because at the same time when this was coming out, they also were making a uh, the Rob Zombie was making a um, his own monster tribute um, movie, and I was worried it was going to turn out like that, and I was a little scared of the approach that we're going to look at for Adam's family. But I try to keep an open mind about Wednesday as much as I could, so I could just sit back and enjoy it, which is what I always do whenever I see a new TV series come out. I try to sit back and enjoy it and keep an open mind obviously so anyway how now I'm gonna rate this now I'm gonna rate it five stars out of five that's my high approval rating for this TV series and I hope by the season two comes out I hope that that will ex will also be a um, five out of five too I hope so that's my review on Wednesday and I'm sorry I rushed ahead guys as per usual but I do think this series is worth watching over and over and over again so I hope you guys may check it out guys and let me know in the comments what you guys think of it so please like and subscribe to my channel here and let me know in the comments what other reviews you want me to what movies and TV shows you want me to review next so I'll see you guys next time on Fangirl Review and I'll, I'll, sure, I'll be sure to see you then. Alright, bye for now.